you're wanting to know how to conduct a SEMrush keyword gap analysis, it's actually pretty straightforward. I'll walk you through the process here really quick. Um, first thing, when you pull up SEMrush, you come over here under SEO, there's these little drop down things. Click on this keyword gap right here. That's going to bring us to the keyword gap tool. Of course, if you don't have an account, you'll need to sign up for SEMrush account. I'll leave a link below where you can get signed up for a trial and use all these tools I'm showing you here. But basically what you'll do once you get to this point is you'll take your domain. So theoretically, let's say, or hypothetically, <laughs> let's say we own officedepot.com and we're trying to beat out staples. Let's go ahead and compare these. So we just put our domain here and then our competitor's domain here. We can put other ones here, but I think for the case of simplicity, it's best to just start with two here. And you can see that Staples is beating us out slightly there, ranking for 103 million terms, and Office Depot is ranking for a million. So theoretically, they're beating us, right? <laughs> and we can see there's some overlap. Uh, in fact, there's a lot of shared terms, 550,000 shared terms, so they're pretty similar in nature. Of course, there's different things like they're branded terms that they're not going to um, rank the same for. You can see these kind of flip positions here. One ranks in number one, the other ranks in number one. One ranks on page six, the other ranks on page six. Now, once we're here, I mean, this stuff's great. It shows us some opportunities, but you're probably going to want to dig into this information down here. You'll see that it's shared. So this is going to be all the terms that we both rank for. So you and your competitor. And then we have the missing. So those are going to be the keywords that your domain doesn't rank for, but that your competitors do rank for, right? So these are probably the ones you're interested in. And then it's even going to break these down further you can kind of explore these in more more detail but if you're going to use the gap tool you're probably exploring what's in the gap so where they're ranking for terms where you aren't so that you can pick up some additional terms right great way to find extra terms that you might not be ranking for already uh, stopwatch we're not ranked at all in this theoretical example so office depot doesn't rank for that term at all and Staples is in position 25, although it's not the greatest. Um, so you can sort these differently. You can see by now they're by default sorted by volume. So you can sort by rank. And you can see that they're selling a lot of gift cards, it looks like. And we're not really, you know, in, in this case, Office Depot isn't selling any or isn't ranking for any of these terms at all. So now we could be like, oh, hey, why don't we just sell some eBay gift cards, rank for these, pick up some more traffic, make some more sales, right? Makes sense, pretty straightforward. You can also sort by keyword difficulty. So figuring out which of these keywords is actually gonna be potential to rank for. Some of these almost look like model numbers of different products. <laughs> toilet paper that's probably in high demand these days <laughs> uh, so take some time to explore you can again dig into these different keywords that are uh, weak difficulty strong difficulty untapped unique you can even look at all the keywords if you want it's also sometimes helpful to export this stuff so that you can sort it manually break things apart, categorize things, make a list of, all right, $3,000 chair, that's that's one we want to go after. In this case, it doesn't really make sense because Office Depot is outranking staples in this case, but you get the idea. And then you can come in, do the exact same thing with the next competitor, on and on and on. And this is for organic, I should say. You could also do this exact same thing for paid traffic and start looking at, all right, where are they running ads on keywords where we aren't? And let's start with volume. So, oh, of course, on the business name. So we're not really, but HP Instant Ink. Looks like they're doing a lot with that. They must be making a fortune on that. 
you know, it might be something we would want to add to our Google Ads campaign, our PPC campaign. So you can start splitting these up by different traffic sources as well and get an even better sense of when someone goes to Google and does a search, where is your competitor showing up, whether it be in the ads or in the organic search results, and you're not showing up and you might want to fix that <laughs> so that you're showing up in the same places that your top competitors are showing up. Totally makes sense, right? So I hope this is helpful. If there's anything you did have questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to them there. Look, if you're the type of person that just doesn't even want to deal with your online marketing anymore <laughs> and you'd rather just hand it over and have somebody take care of it for you, or if you really just want to talk to somebody and get some pointers, um, let's connect. I do offer consulting. I have different uh, services I can offer to help you grow your business through digital marketing. But yeah, feel free to check out my website. You can come on over to TravisWilkie.com. Here's how to spell it because it's kind of funky. Uh, but you can come check out some case studies, see the results I've been able to get for my clients over the years. And uh, if you're interested, we can connect. I'd love to help you out. If you can't tell, I love helping business owners grow especially when it comes to digital marketing. So, all right, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.